So I love hobbies and I get into all kinds of things. And so right now my new hobby is trying to make a homemade still. And I found the best way to maybe do that would be to use an old keg. And that's what I did this morning. I went and drove about an hour south of here to pick up a used keg. Then I'm going to show you a little bit how I'm going to turn this into the boiler for the, um, the still. Okay. Now the thing you need to know about uh, homemade stills is that some states in the country, I believe it's completely illegal to even own one. Um, it's certainly illegal to distill alcohol in any of the 50 states. So just be aware of um, your laws and regulations where you live. You don't want to get in any kind of real trouble with this thing. This is just for fun. Uh, I'm going to just build it because I'm a whiskey drinker. I love it. Uh, and I think this would be kind of a fun thing to have around. So here we go. I'm going to show you how to get this thing ready. Now here is the keg that I obtained this morning. It's an old uh, Anheuser-Busch keg. You can see it's been through a little wear and tear. Uh, get certainly some scratches and adhesive and all those kinds of things on there and I'm going to work to get that all cleaned off and try to make this thing look nice. So it's 2017 and there's a sticker on the keg that says 2009 so this thing has been around for a good while. Uh, on top here is what we call the Sankey valve and that is where we're going to attach a two inch copper pipe to come up off the top and be the column for the still. So first thing we've got to do is you see that little ball in the middle, we have to release the pressure that's inside of this thing. And the fact you can read right there, warning this container will rupture if pressured above 60 PSI. So there's a lot of pressure in these things sometimes. So we've got to release that. And you want to be real careful when you do. Um, and you, what you do is you take a screwdriver. Now that I've got one, I can show you. You take a screwdriver and you apply some pressure down here on this still ball and uh, release the pressure. Now I've already done that. Now what you want to do is make sure that this is not pointing towards your face when you do that because there might be some stale beer or the pressure uh, rise air in there that would come back and hit you in the face. So make sure you're pointing this thing out at an angle. You can straddle it, tilt it over, make sure it's not pointing at anybody unless you just don't like them and that would be what you would do first. Now there's also a metal ring right here that goes inside the sinky valve, excuse me, and that's right here on the inside, this, this one right here, and we've got to remove that uh, so we can get the stem out of the inside. So I'm going to do that next. All right, so it's really hard to film and shoot uh, and get this thing out at the same time. But what I did is took the screwdriver here, and actually where there's this right on the other side, there it is right there, okay? I stuck the screwdriver in there and began to pry this thing out. And voila, it is removed, like so. Ta -da. All right, so we really just took a little bit of jimmy, and all I had to do is kind of twist this around a little bit, and now that stem is ready to come on out, and so is the smell of that beer down in there. So the next step is going to be to rinse this bad boy out. All right, got it dumped out. I uh, did it back there behind my fence because I didn't want the dog to totally get drunk and wasted um, and now the thing is empty except for a little beer residue in there and I'm going to take a hose and hose this bad boy out and the next step I'm going to just try to make this thing shine and look pretty Good workout. All right. It's too bad that beer was probably not drinkable. Could use a little bit right now. Just gonna put a little bit more water in there, shake it around, dump it out again. You get the thing where it doesn't smell like stale beer. And then on to shine in the outside, buddy. All right, so what I want to do next is start by trying to get off the sticker residue. I've heard that goof off or goo gone, those types of things probably work okay and should be fine for this type of project. I think you can use baking soda and vinegar for a little bit more natural. We're going to give this a shot and see how it goes.
All right, so all the adhesive has been removed, at least most of it. Um, this thick, sticky stuff is off, and hopefully that'll make sanding a little easier so the sandpaper doesn't get all gummed up. I used a combination of some Goo Gone and uh, scrubbing that on there with a 16 cent, um, 16 cent uh, grill brush that I got at the Dollar General at 90% off. Sweet. And so the next step is going to be to try to polish this thing. And what I've seen some folks do online already is that they use a 60 grit sandpaper and then kind of go from there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run to the hardware store, pick up some 60 grit paper and see if I can't start shining this thing up. All right, so a quick trip to the hardware store and I came back with some 50 grit paper to go on my mouse. Um, and so we'll give this a try and see how much uh, how much we can buff this out. If it doesn't look great, uh, perfect, that's okay. Um, just trying to make it look a little nicer. So we'll see. Well, I think you can tell a little bit of difference. I honestly wasn't sure at first. It's kind of more of a brushed metal look, you know, going on here. But it does seem to be cleaning things up a bit. You can see that the first half, top half up here, I've already started sanding and the bottom half I haven't touched. I, I think it looks better. I think it's an improvement. So we'll keep going. <laughs> So first level of sanding is done. You can see there's still some adhesive on there that I'm going to have to deal with. So I'll get that off and then maybe go with a finer grid of sandpaper and see if I can make it look a little better yet. All right, so there you have it. It started out with a 50 grit paper and went through the whole thing and that really shined it up pretty well. It left kind of a brushed metal finish, which I'm cool with that. Uh, I tried to go over it with a 120 and a 220 grit paper that I had in the package, but uh, I'm not sure that it really made much difference after that. So uh, it's, it's not spotless, but hey, I think it looks a lot better than we started and something I can be proud to use. So the next step is going to have to be uh, trying to put some holes in this thing. Uh, one for a drain, one for maybe a big portal to fill and empty, and uh, that's where it gets a little tricky. I'm, I'm not sure how to put a hole in this, uh, but um, some help would be appreciated. So. That's it. Um, that's part one of getting this keg ready for my still. Well, I said that was it, but I didn't really mean it. I want to give a shout out to Jesse at Still It. And you can check out his YouTube page. It is amazing. He's one of the reasons I feel like I'm able to pull this off. Uh, being a fairly new distiller himself, you can see how he's really making it work. And so thanks, Jesse. Um, and you can see his YouTube page right up here. I'll put a link.